Welcome back, everyone, to an AEW Dynamite review for October 28th, 2020. And this was a good episode of Dynamite. Just, I just got to let you know up top, up front, it was a good episode. Most of the matches were good to great tonight. Good to great. And that's all one could ask for on a weekly wrestling show and it was indeed good we kicked off the show with a segment that involved mjf wardlow and sammy guevara mjf says he's proud of wardlow if he wins the tournament mjf becomes the world champ because he says his property is my property wardlow then reluctantly agreed Sammy then approaches MJF about him coming into the inner circle. Guevara clearly does not want MJF a part of the inner circle. MJF later backs away from Guevara as the segment ended. And as Wardlow approached the uh, ramp for his match, Wardlow versus Hangman Adam Page. And this was for a shot at the AEW World Championship. Page wastes no time as he drop kicks Warlow into the corner. Warlow then stops Page in his tracks. Later, Warlow takes a clothesline from the top rope from Page to the apron. On the outside, Warlow spears Page through the rails. Page narrowly beats the 10 count as he made his way back into the ring after this. Warlow then tosses Page like he was a sack of potatoes and follows it up with a gut wrench power bomb for a two count. Warlow then goes for a send time, but he misses and he looked great doing it. Page hits a Larry Hara moonsaw from the top rope to Warlow on the outside of the ring. He follows that up with a running moonsault and then he gets a one count after they get back into the ring. Warlow then encounters the buckshot lariat once. Warlow hits his F10 on Page, but Page quickly rolls out of the ring to prevent a cover. Later, not long after this, Page delivers a top rope fallaway slam to Warlow, and then he finally hits his buckshot lariat twice to Warlow for the win. Great opening match. Both guys look good, especially Wardlow. He came out of this looking better than he did before. And it was good stuff. Wardlow continues to show promise. Same with Paige. Paige, therefore, is in the, um, the match, the finals for uh, the tournament, which will be held at full gear versus we'll find out later. After this match, we had a Mox video promo. He says, November 7th isn't about the, the contender. This one is personal. He's not going to defend the title. He's going to weaponize it. There's no room for this Eddie in AEW. The world champ crushes egos, and he tells Eddie Kingston to protect your neck. Another great promo from Mox. Next match, we had Eddie Kingston versus Matt Seidel. Eddie says, how dare the world's champ not be here? He said, I'm tired of talking. I want to fight. Both start the match off with locks and holds. Seidel gets a chop off on Eddie in a corner. Seidel then rolls up Eddie for a two count. Seidel works on Kingston's sides with some kicks. Back from the break, Seidel hits a roundhouse kick, and he gets a two count for that. Seidel then hits a diving knee drop from the top for a two count. Kingston later uses Mox's bulldog choke to Seidel for the win via a tap out. He used this move to send a message to Mox. He even furthered that with, 
Eddie Mae Seidel say, I quit. As Kingston just imagined Seidel was Mox. He said, say, I quit Moxley. And then after that, after he said, I quit, he says, I'm sorry, Mox. And that's how the match ended. Good stuff. By the way, the world over versus page match that gets a three. Definitely dynamite worthy. And the Eddie versus Seidel match that gets a, it gets a three. Next up, we had a segment from FTR and the Bucks. As Calibre says, how's the ankle to Matt Jackson? He says his ankle is fine. He says he'll be at full gear. As Calibre then says, why would you jeopardize this match? He said this to FTR. Dax Harwood says it's a dream match, but above that, is being the champs. They value being the champs more than this being a dream match. They have to earn their legacy. Sometimes good people do bad things, Matt says. They're not proud, but last year they've been suffering. They needed some kind of edge. Not long after that, FTR walks out on the interview because they got upset with Excalibur asking the Bucks more questions than he did for them. Excalibur then says they have more to lose the Bucks. And then the Bucks drop this bombshell. If they don't win the tag team titles, they won't challenge for them again. And they're pulling a Cody with this. Will this make the match a bit predictable? Possibly. Did they need the stipulation? I don't think so. Why would you, they're kind of booking themselves in a corner right here. Do you really want to take the titles off FTR right now? So soon they've had a decent run with them so far, but do you want the bucks to win after all this time of sitting, taking a back seat in the division? This could go either way, but we'll see. We shall see what happens. But I kind of don't like the stipulation. There's no need to um, pull a Cody. Next segment, we had the town hall meeting with the uh, inner circle and MJF. Tony Schiavone and Dasha Gonzalez host this. The inner circle comes out first and MJF does second. Luchasaurus asks a question first and he says, as a historian, he understands economics. How can you ensure prosperity for the inner circle? And then MJF shows a chart on the screen of their profits rising as soon as he joins the group. Later, Eric Bischoff comes out and he has some hard hitting questions for MJF. And all his questions prompted MJF to drop his charade. And then it says he does everything. He gave Jericho the best segment he's ever had and blah, blah, blah. And then Jericho MJF then asked, what hasn't he done? And then Jericho says, you haven't beaten me. And Jericho's going to give him a chance at full gear. If he wins, Jericho will allow him to join the inner circle. MJF says he'll do whatever it takes to win anything he put emphasis on anything i wonder what that means ortiz then takes the mic and then lets mjf know what he thinks and he doesn't like it he then makes a match that ortiz and sammy Guevara will face off against mjf and wardlow next week that should be an interesting match he says we're gonna make it where you won't even make it to full gear they're going to soften them up for Jericho. We shall see how this goes. Next segment, we had Team Taz, and they talked about Hobbs and why they're still going after him. And they says, Taz says, they're about money. And Hobbs is money. They basically know talent when they see it. Next segment, we had Orange Cassidy versus Cody for the TNT championship in a lumberjack match. Both go for their signature moves early. Orange Cassidy gets the better of Cody with a headlock with headlock takedowns. 
Cody later flips Orange Cassidy in the corner. Uno goes for Cody's boot, but Orange Cassidy takes advantage with a roll up for a two count. Orange Cassidy then reverses a Cody vertical for his own stalling suplex. Cody later counters Orange Cassidy swinging DDT, but gets outside and falls for it when he gets back into the ring and he gets a two count. Orange Cassidy then later hits the lazy splash, but Cody gets his knees up. And then we went to break not long after that. And then we came back from break. Cody superplexes Orange Cassidy onto the pile of lumberjacks on the outside of the ring. That looked cool. Cody hits his Cody cutter not long after for a two count. Orange Cassidy then delivers his lazy punches, but Cody takes his head off with a clothesline. Cody kicks out of the beach break not long after this. Following that, John Silver of the Dark Order gets into the ring and super kicks, super kick or pump kicks Orange Cassidy, which gets him into trouble. And then this allowed or um, this allowed Cody to hit the crossroads and he retained his championship as a result. He didn't know that interference happened because his back was turned. So he didn't know he took advantage of something that the heels gave him, whether they wanted to or not. The match gets a, a three. It's definitely dynamite worthy, but most people did not like the finish, how the finish happened. And some didn't like the fact that it was a lumberjack match. They would have preferred a straight up wrestling match, but it was all right. In my opinion, I liked the match. It sucks that Orange Cassidy lost all three of his TNT title match opportunities. So he's going to go to the back of the line. And as a result of this match, he's going to face John Silver in the buy-in at full gear, which should be a good match. But I was kind of hoping he'd win the title, but maybe he'll get that opportunity again down the line. Now I think Darby will be winning that title off Cody at full gear. Because as a result of Cody winning this match, he will be facing Darby Allen at full gear for the TNT Championship. Should be a good match. Will Darby get that elusive win over Cody? I hope so. Next segment, we had Alex Marvez attempting to interview the best friends. But out of nowhere, Miro and Kip Sabian, along with Penelope Ford, gives them Halloween presents. But before they even get a chance to open it, the uh, Miro and Kip beat up the best friends in their locker room. After this, we had our next match, and it was one of the better ones of the night. We had in newly crowned NWA Women's Champion Serena Deeb, who is also an AEW talent, versus newcomer Layla Hirsch, whom is great. This match was great. Hirsch was also up against Hikaru Shida on Dark the previous night, and that match was great as well. They would be fools to let this woman leave. They have to sign her. Please, I hope they do. Both stalked it out, then locked it up. Hirsch gets deep in a headlock and spins around a bit while holding on to her head to start the match. Later, Hirsch applies an arm bar, but gets in a pinning predicament due to the Serena rolling over for a two count. Layla then works on Deeb's elbow as we head to break. During the break, Hirsch continued to work on Deeb's arm. Deeb then counters with the neck breaker to break Hirsch's momentum. Back from the break, Hirsch delivers palm strikes, followed by a released German as she showed off her strength by doing such she then heads to the top not long after and goes for a moonsault but she misses and serena capitalizes with a neck breaker after that deeb hooks hirsch into a submission hold for the tap out win and it was a great match we need more women's title matches like that 
on Dynamite. Now, I like, I enjoy NWA women's title matches being defended on Dynamite. I enjoy it, but I'm wondering why don't AEW's own, why doesn't AEW's own championship get this kind of treatment? The NWA championship matches seem very important and they have great matches for the each and every time they've been defended, the matches have been great, but we can't say the same for AEW's own championship. Why is what I want to know. Why isn't Sheeta on TV defending that title? She does have to be there every week, but at least every other week defending the title or cutting a promo or something on someone, getting a few started, get some get some promos going. They can be pre-recorded promos, videos, etc., vignettes. Come on, what are they doing? If not on Dynamite, do it on Dark. Got to build up that title. But later, um, Sheeta did challenge Nyla who's been the number one contender for months now, at least to a match at full gear. And that's where I think Sheeta will finally drop the title to Nyla, but will they book Nyla to be the beast that she can be and bring that title up the prestige ladder? I hope so. Cause I do think she's going to win the title back at, full gear and this time I hope they book that title as it should be with great matches, great workers involved. Come on. I know you can do it. AEW, do it, please. The fan base wants it. Next match. We had Sean Spears versus VSK who made an appearance on dark this week. Spears immediately hits the DVD the Death Valley driver or the C4 as he calls it for the win. Spears then grabs a dude dressed as a cow from the audience. But as he, um, he was going to wreck this guy, but as he turned to Tully to grab a piece for his loaded glove, the guy took off the, the mask or the head, the cow head. And it turned out to be, Scorpio Sky. Soon as Spears turned around, he suffered an STO from Sky. And this furthers their feud that they have going, which has been built up on Dark and is finding its way onto Dynamite. And they will have a match next week on Dynamite, which should be good. More TV time for these guys would be nice. And then we had the main event, which was the best match of the night. Match of the night right here. We had Penta El Zero Miedo versus Kenny Omega. The semifinal eliminator match. Entrance. Omega had another long interest going over his many accolades. Very hill like he had the sweeper ladies out there. Good stuff. Love it. Omega still had his shirt on. As the match started, Omega then gets a, an aggressive side headlock to Penta. Omega then teases Penta and Phoenix with the triple A title underneath his shirt. And that's why he was wearing the shirt for the early part of the match, because he still had the triple A belt on. And there is still the AAA partnership going, which I'm surprised about because of the pandemic and all. Omega then takes some chops from Pentagon. Penta then takes off his glove, but instead of tossing it, as he tossed it to the referee, Omega caught it and then slapped Penta. Penta then hit a tope conhilo on Omega, as we went to break not long after, back from the break, Omega hits a step up Rana on Penta. He then goes for a Terminator dive on Penta. Penta later hits a diving crossbody on Omega to the, op to the outside. Penta hits a sling blade from the middle 
rope for a two count not long after. Omega then gets two Snapdragon suplexes off on Penta, but Omega does not cover after him. He then goes for a third, but Penta fights it off. Omega hits a V trigger to Penta in the corner. Then Omega brings him to the top rope. Goes for an avalanche dragon suplex, but Penta fights him off. After this, Penta hits a destroyer from the top rope onto Omega onto the ramp, which was a brutal spot. Great. Good stuff. He then gets him into the ring as Penta hits the package power driver, but Omega kicks out at a close three count. Penta then went to run the ropes, but gets caught with the V-trigger, but later fights off the one-winged angel, which would spell doom. Penta then snaps Omega's arm, which turns the match around a bit for him. Later, Omega hits the one-winged angel after a V-trigger for the win. Valiant effort from Penta, but it wasn't enough to topple Omega. Omega advances in the tournament to face Hangman Page, his former tag team partner, which should be a very good match at full gear. Predictable, yes, the tournament was, but it was a good predictable. So we're going to get a good match out of this final. And there you have it. I thought it was a good episode of Dynamite. Good stuff. Definitely go back and watch the Pentagon versus Omega match, the Serena D versus Hirsch match, and Wardlow versus Page match. Check that out as well. Thanks for watching or listening, and I will catch you with the next review. Stay safe.